And I know that the miraculous is a stumbling block. They call me a prosperity preacher. I mean, when I had Kenneth come here, Kenneth Copeland, who like people, oh my, I've never met more people that hate somebody in my whole life than, than people hate Kenneth. I've never seen anything like it. I'm like, it's, it's, it's amazing. But I won't stand before God and hate somebody that's in the body of Christ. And I mean, I don't, I, that's ridiculous. Like faith teaching, like crazy teaching. And people hate Oral Roberts, people hate Kenneth Hagin because they have no Holy Spirit. Hey guys, hey, welcome to Brand Perspective. My name is Kelly Powers. Glad you joined today. Today we're gonna to be looking at Todd White and how he is not happy. He comes against those who criticize him, Kenneth Copeland, Mike Bickle, Benny Hinn, Francis Chan, Kenneth Copeland, and others. This is going to be some crazy stuff. I hope you watch it, you see the clips, see where I'm coming from. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel of The Brilliant Perspective, please do. Please visit our website, rootedinchrist.org. All right, so today, before I get to it, there's a video that you need to see. I'm going to put it up there for a card link. Check it out. It'll be also in the description. It's the video with Kenneth Copeland and Todd White, their false gospel exposed. Many people say, Kelly, you are just barking up the wrong tree with Todd White and Kenneth Copeland. He, there's old news, old stuff. No, just this last year, um, both Todd White and Kenneth Copeland were working together, coming together where Todd White actually says Kenneth Copeland is his spiritual father, his mentor. And you can actually even see clips in that video where Todd White is at church with Kenneth Copeland being his teacher. And he's teaching the false gospel that Jesus Christ didn't pay the crop, pay the full sin upon the cross as an atoning sacrifice. Nope. He had to go to hell, be born again, be tormented by his sin, uh, for sin by demons and Satan, and become the first born again man from the dead. That's the gospel of Kenneth Copeland, Todd White, Benny Hinn, Mike Bickle, Joyce Myers, T.D. Jakes, and a lot of others out there. And so it's dangerous stuff. When you're messing with the gospel, this is why I do what I do. Matthew 7, 15 says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. Jesus said that there'll be many false Christs and many false prophets who arise in the end days doing signs and wonders, deceiving people, if even possible, the elect. Matthew 24, 24, Jesus said, Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, I did miracles, cast out demons, signs and wonders. And Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of wickedness. That's seven, Matthew 7, 23. And the bottom line is this. Paul said, be careful of those who preach another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. And if anyone preaches a different gospel than what Paul taught, the apostles taught, what Christ taught, they are to be accursed, according to Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. So this is a serious business. So today, we're going to be looking at uh, Todd White endorsing other false word of faith preachers. You're going to want to see this for yourself. Today, I saw a post. Just a buddy of mine sent me a text and with Francis Chan and I hugging and some whatever. They went after him and said, why would Francis Chan be hugging a charlatan? And it made me cry, not sadness. I'm like, oh God, bless them real good. Because if everybody looks at you and is, and is totally happy about you, you better question where your life is. And if everybody speaks well of you, Jesus said, woe to you when everybody speaks well of you. So that's actually a very true statement. If everyone speaks well of you, woe to you for sure. If you're preaching the gospel and people don't like you, that's a beautiful thing because at least you're standing for the truth. But if you're teaching heresy, word faith, false miracles, prosperity doctrine, and people speak well of you, that's not good either. But if people are speaking against you, as the Bible warns, now that is a good thing. Now we're going to get into just a minute here. Todd White's going to defend how those who criticize People like him are going to be in the same league as Jesus. They did not speak well of Jesus, and Jesus was the most perfect, perfect, 
person to ever walk this planet. And they spoke horrible of him. And he didn't get an attitude. He lived in gratitude and spent time in prayer in vehement cries, crying out and pouring out his heart for the people that hated him because he knew that they didn't know who they were. So this is interesting. So Todd White is, is sad because people are starting to criticize Francis Chan, who's kind of been, being in the same camp with Todd White. And Francis Chan for some years now, if you don't know much about Francis Chan, but he used to be really sound and thought and doctrine. In the last few years, he's been endorsing people like Benny Hinn, Todd White, and now he's endorsing Bill Johnson of the New Apostolic Reformation Movement, being involved with Bethel. If you don't believe me, in fact, go to my last video, The Word of Faith Heresy Exposed, and you can see these links over there that I've shared for people, but you can also go and check out the actual source. It's, well, it's called The English, The Unveiling, and you'll see it over there where Francis Chan is now actually saying, look, I used to be a critique of you guys, because I didn't believe in these miracles, but now I do. But he says, I may have some differences of doctrines, but I'm at least with you guys now. So the problem with Francis Chan, I don't believe this, that he's not a Christian, but he's endorsing false teachers. He's getting in the same camp, in the same bed with charlatans, false teachers of the Word of Faith movement, and now the New Apostolic Reformation. So the problem here with Todd White is... Of course, at first he's defending Francis Chan, and, and Francis Chan may be a wonderful husband, and, and he may be still, I, I, I don't know for sure, absolutely, I'm never going to go this far in, from what I can understand about Francis Chan right now, because I haven't heard anything about him teaching a false gospel or another Jesus. He's just, he's just in the view that the supernatural can happen, which I would agree with him, but I don't believe it comes from the word of faith, charlatans, right? I don't believe it's these heretics, right? And that's the problem with Francis Chan is because he's now in the same camp with your Benny Hinn, with your Todd White, with your Kenneth Copeland, with your Bill Johnson. And these guys are all false teachers. So whatever happened to Francis Chan's sermon, I have no idea. But if people are trying to speak with him, praise the Lord. Hopefully they're, some of them are actually trying to reach out in a positive way, not just attacking him. And so if they're just attacking him, like maybe what Todd might have been saying, and that's how it is, that's a sad thing. I get so many hate emails or comments from people saying, how dare you address Joyce Meyer? How dare you say something against Kenneth Copeland? You don't judge them. You're going to go to hell. I get that. I get these wacky emails and comments from people, and they're telling me I'm going to go to hell because of what I've shared. And all that I have shared is, look, this is what the gospel is. This is what the word of faith teaches for the gospel, and this is another gospel. And therefore, we need to take heed for what the gospel is. Amen. And so Todd White doesn't have I, I, I really have a hard time people say, Oh, you are judging him wrong. Look, he claims to be a teacher, he's claiming to be of the Christ, and he rejects those people who are trying to correct him. He thinks these things are all true and biblical, and that's farthest from the truth. Another important point to bring up is the fact that he really is, 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 is opposed to people who are trying to share information about why the word of faith people are false. You see, if you know anything about the Bible, you know that they teach a different gospel. Therefore, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, and many of these other guys, Bill Johnson, if they're teaching a false gospel, we should be sounding the alarm saying, look. This is another gospel, Galatians 1, 6, 2 Corinthians 11, 4, Matthew 7, 15 through 23, and a list of other scriptures that give clear warnings. So for those of you who may watch and say, ah, all you want to do is just divide. No, we've got to stand up for what's right biblically. And yes, Jesus was hated. But he wasn't hated for preaching a false gospel. He was hated because he went against religious leaders, and they did not want to believe he was the Christ. But he confronted false teachers left and right. And the same thing with us Christians. We are instructed to confront false prophets, false teachers, false gospels for the well-being of the sheep, the body of Christ. Amen. You look into his eyes up close, it'll freak you out, man, because you will see real faith in his eyes. Then when I had Kenneth come here, I just asked him if he'd come and check the building out, look at it, and maybe just talk with me. He talked to me. I lost so many people that were 
like monthly supporters, they were like, we will never support you again now that we know that you're in cahoots with this, like, this wolf. I'm like, well, we, you probably shouldn't have been a part of this to begin with if that's the way you think about God's church. I wasn't being mean, I'm just being real. Now that right there says a whole lot, folks. He says he lost supporters and people who were a part of whatever his ministry was or in support of him. When they found out that he was actually in, as he said, cahoots with Kenneth Copeland. Praise God for any of you out there who might have been some of those that left and finally realized, wow, I did not know this about Todd White. This is the problem with people. They think Todd White, he's going out doing the street evangelism, doing these different things. Man, he's just like your everyday guy. And you know what? He does seem that kind of way. I won't lie to you. He's got a charisma about him. He seems friendly. I've seen some of his videos. He's about trying to share people with, you know, feeling valued. But the problem is, where's the gospel? Where's the cross? Where's the resurrection? Where's the turn from the sin to Jesus Christ? This is the number one problem with Todd White. Along with, there have been videos that have been demonstrated, he has actually done fake miracles. So not only preaching the gospel, encouraging and endorsing false teachers, he's also doing fake miracles. That says a lot about this so-called Todd White man of God. Robert Morris is labeled in that same category. Like he's just a prosperity preacher. He's one of the most amazing speakers I've ever heard on tithing and offerings and stuff, bringing up biblical truth that is so ridiculously crazy, it's actually scary. That blessed life, never ever read anything like it in my whole life. And if you can't be a person that is a tither or an offer, you limit yourself. You're stopping yourself from receiving God's blessing. Why? Because why would God bless you when you can't even be a steward of what you have? People are like, I wanna win the lottery, then I'll give. Are you willing to give what you have now? Well, not until they win the lottery. You'll never. <laughs> you know, and that's interesting. There's nothing wrong with tithing. Tithing is a biblical thing. But this is that sowing the seed doctrine. You gotta give to get. That's the word of faith, heresy. That's one of the problems with the word of faith. If you know anything about them, the word of faith movement teaches Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, many others out there, T.D. Jakes, Joyce Meyer, all these other ones, they out there are like, look, in order for to get the blessing from God, you've got to give. You've got to sow a seed to the ministry so that before God can give you. That's one of the things, if you read that, check out that video I shared with Kenneth Copeland and Todd White, The False Gospel, you actually see clips of Kenneth Copeland saying, look, you've got to give money. You've got to give money to this ministry. This is, this is, this is proven ground. They don't have a property. Do you know that he, he was Oral Roberts' pilot? <laughs> that would have been an intense plane ride. <laughs> Crazy. Do you know that he used to listen to constant teachings, constant teachings, constant teaching from Pop Hagen, constant. Oral Roberts, he'd have them on at nighttime when he's sleeping. Oh, I gotta get this in me, got it. Faith teaching, like crazy teaching. And people hate Oral Roberts, people hate Kenneth Hagin, because they have no Holy Spirit. No relationship with Jesus. So they hate these people. It's so crazy. You heard it. People hate these people. They're against word of faith. They have no Holy Spirit. That's crazy. So, in other words, if you are one who critiques people like Todd White, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, Joyce Meyer, T.D. Jakes, Kenneth Hagen, Mike Bickle, Bill Johnson, and others who are the Word of Faith, they're New Apostolic, false prophets, and false um, apostles, you don't have the Holy Spirit. I was actually interested when I was looking around, I was looking for a different video, Todd White earlier, and I came across this one. I'm actually glad that I did, because this even shows even more evidence that Todd White is what he mocks about people who say, can't open as a wolf. 
sadly, whatever Christianity Todd White thinks he has isn't the real deal. You can go around smiling. You can give people hugs. You can tell people God loves you because the Bible says God is love. And God, God so loved the world, he was only begotten son. But let me tell you something. Many will say, Lord, Lord, I came in your name. I prophesied your name. I cast out demons. I did many miracles in your name. And Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of lawlessness, of evil. This is the reality. False prophets will look like Christians. False teachers will sound like the real deal. That's why it's so important to know the Jesus of the Bible, the gospel of the Bible. That's why Latter-day Saints, Mormons, One is Pentecostal, Seventh-day Adventists, the diehard Roman Catholic, Word of Faith people. So many people are caught up with a false Jesus and a false gospel. Folks, I'm end with this. You've got to know the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is that Jesus Christ died according to Scripture and rose again. Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 46. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. It's all about that Christ was the Messiah. And that through his physical body, he gave atonement, Isaiah 53. And through his shed blood and death upon the cross, it is finished. Tell, tell us, John 1930. According to Colossians 1, 19 through 20, it was through his shed blood and physical body that he brought reconciliation to the world. There is nothing in the Bible that Jesus had to die spiritually, taste spiritual death, be separated from God, and go to hell to become born again. That is a false gospel from the pit of hell. That is a false gospel, folks. Yes, old things back in the day, it might say that Jesus went into Hades. The, the, the Nicene Creed says he went into hell. But that's, it's not the same place of torment. It went to the place of dead, right? There's a difference. Jesus did say in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 19 and 20, that he went and preached to those who were dead, the spirits who were held in captivity. And he preached victory and triumph to them. He didn't go there to get suffered or die, taste spiritual death, become born again, like these heresy teachers teach. That's false. Jesus said, Father, into thy hands, I commit my spirit. I go to be where the Father is. And where I go, you come with me too, John 14. Jesus went when he died upon the cross in the very presence of the Father. And during those three days, whatever was all going on, he went to Abraham's bosom, got the people out of there, and he went to the place of the spirits who were in prison and preached victory to them. But in no way did Jesus ever have to suffer and become born again. And no way did he have to become the first born again man. That's a false doctrine that Bill Johnson teaches. That's a false doctrine that Todd White, Hannah Copeland, Benny Hinn, and the list goes on of the other word of faith and new apostolic reformers teach. Do not be deceived. All right, guys, thank you for watching so far with this video. I hope that something from this challenged you today. If you're a Christian, please share this with as many people as you can. Like this video and share some comments. If you are one of those people who believes Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Meyer, Todd White, these other guys are okay, and you don't have any problem with them, and you think what I'm sharing is wrong, I don't know how I'll say this to you. Please, just get into the Word of God. See what the gospel really is. Learn what it means to be cautious and be careful of false prophets, as I shared with you before. Because we live in a day and age where so much goofiness is going on in the church today so much liberalism so much false teachings we need to know what the word of god teaches and you may not like what i gotta say but i want to encourage you please test it by the word of god hey guys thank you for being a part of this video today please subscribe to the brand perspective youtube channel please check out our website rootedinchrist.org and may you know the jesus and the gospel of the bible the one who died upon the cross and rose again through his shed blood that brings atonement, not no spiritual goofy death, not no born again in hell thing. Those are false teachings that are unbiblical, they're heretical, and sadly, I hate to say it like this, they are doctrines of demons. God bless you. May you know Jesus Christ personally. May you be set free and grow in his grace. Lord bless.